Hello everybody and welcome to Whiskey Lore. I am Drew Hanish and I am going to be your host for these episodes where we talk about different aspects of whiskey and the whiskey industry. And for this first episode, I thought it'd be a good idea since I've toured a bunch of distilleries to give you guys an impression of the very first distillery I ever went to, which was the Maker's Mark Distillery. So I'm going to give you some of my impressions about the tour itself. I'm going to give you a little bit of history about the distillery. We'll talk about the tasting experience and what you can expect when you go there. And we'll talk about some of the unique aspects and maybe some stuff you can do along with going to the Maker's Mark Distillery for their tour because there's some other stuff in the area that might be nice to tack on with your trip. So Maker's Mark was one of the first bourbons that, in fact, it was the first bourbon that I bought. I had bought Jack Daniels, which is a Tennessee sour mash whiskey. And there is a distinction between the two, which we'll get into one of these days. But this was the first bourbon that I bought. And I bought it because somebody said, it's a really good starter bourbon. It's one that it's smooth and approachable. And so if you're just getting started, that is a good bourbon to start with. Well, interestingly enough, it ended up being the first bourbon that I actually went on a tour for. So when I planned my 19 distilleries between Kentucky and Tennessee, I decided to head to little old Laredo, Kentucky, and I wanted to see what this distillery was all about. I'd heard some good things about it. And after my tour was done and I had gone to all 19 of those distilleries, I came up with a top 10 list of my favorite distillery tours and Maker's Mark was in the top three. It really is a great tour for you to get started on. If you did one tour, any of the three that are in my top three would be good ones because there are so many different aspects of the bourbon creation experience that you get to see there but then there's other aspects of the place that are just really really cool so we're going to talk a bit about that now how do you get to maker's mark it's in the middle of nowhere it's beautiful but there's not a lot of stuff in that particular area of kentucky so usually if you're going to maker's mark you've kind of set yourself to a plan to make that a destination location it's about an hour and a quarter from louisville and it's about an hour and a quarter from lexington so you're gonna have to make the effort to get out there you're gonna have to probably not trust your gps too much mine did okay i did google maps and i got there without too much trouble but so once you get there it's beautiful big parking lot easy to get into and then you're gonna go walk across the little street there and into the welcome center which is this beautiful glass and wood enclosure that just feels like class from one end to the other you'll go in you'll get your distillery tour ticket which when i went on the tour it was $12 it's now $14 to go on the tour but it's still as you'll find out you get some do some tasting at the end and it's just a really good experience so you go buy your ticket and then the first thing they did, I was there on a Sunday, and as I walked through, they said, well, go into the waiting area, and wait for your tour, and you can have some bourbon-infused coffee while you're in there, which I thought was a fantastic little perk to get. So I went and enjoyed some coffee. You're standing in a room with a beautiful chandelier, the woodwork, the, they have these tapestries, tile uh, mosaics, over by the bathrooms that uh, one has the maker's mark, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. And you just sit in there, relax, wait till everybody gets together, and then your tour guide will walk you out towards the distillery. Now the distillery is full featured. One of the things that stood out to me about this tour is that when you get into the area where you have the sour mash, fermenting you have the three vats there and they're all at different stages of fermentation and if you've never seen that process before this is one of the best examples because they're wide open and you get a chance to see what condition 
that mashes in in each of those three tubs and on top of that they let us dip our finger in there and actually taste the mash so and before you go oh that's unsanitary this is going to go through a lot of high heat before it actually ends up in the bottle so i wouldn't sweat that too much but that was really cool getting to see that then you walk around this gorgeous campus that they have the the attention to detail the country home feel of it you walk by this wheelbarrow full of whiskey barrels you can take your selfies if you want to do that over there if you look at the buildings they have these shutters that have little cut in etchings of the whiskey bottles on them it's uh, there's a little creek that runs through there so it's just it's a great feeling place when you go there then they take us into this warehouse that is actually built into the side of the hill and they needed a very temperature controlled facility and the reason is because of this this makers 46 the only difference between these two whiskeys really from my understanding is that this actually goes through an extra aging process they take this both are made with the same formula but they take this and they will pour it into a completely new barrel where they have put these little wood slats in there that are called staves the staves are made out of french oak and they've been fired so that they release some of the the flavors and the oils out into the whiskey that's being put into the barrels and then because this is such a short term for aging they need it to be a little bit more temperature controlled and so it sits in there it comes out it's makers 46 and one question i did not ask them which i probably should have is the 46 what does that mean and i found this out just not too long ago that the 46 is they were trying to experiment with some different ways of enhancing maker's mark with barrels and that just happened to be the 46th way and so they just went with the name makers 46 it is a really really good bourbon both of these are really good bourbons so that gives you sort of a feel for some of the stuff that you'll see on the tour you'll also get to go in the print shop that's where i got this label from and they'll go through the entire story of margie samuels and margie samuels is uh, the wife of bill samuels senior who is the one that mixed with the uh, and messed with the old family recipe and decided to yank the rye out of the recipe and put wheat in its place completely changing the characteristic of this whiskey and making it much smoother less harsh easy to a, a drink and so that's really when the change happened in the 1950s well his wife margie samuels is as important in the legacy of this whiskey as he is because she is this bottle she is what this bottle um, how this bottle came to be so when we look at the maker's mark logo you're going to see here that there's a little s and an iv and a star those all have a meaning and the maker's mark is that little symbol and the s is for samuels because he was the one that changed the formula and he was a fourth generation distiller in the family so that's where the iv and roman numerals meaning four and then the star is for star hill which is where uh, in loretto the maker's mark distillery sits so all of that has a little story around it and she was really trying to elevate this whiskey he was elevating the flavor she was elevating the bottle so she went with a cognac sort of direction where they wax seal their bottles and that's where this sort of um, blown out bottle style there's a little stubbier than some of the other bottles that you may see on the shelf that's where that design came from it came from her so that's why she's in the bourbon hall of fame because and as the first female because she was so critically important to makers mark and what they are known for these days so 
I love that story. They go through that entire story while you're on the tour. And then as you get to the uh, warehouse where you're seeing and smelling the angel's share, then the next place you go is the tasting room. And in the tasting room, they're going to give you five samples. I almost cheated you on one. They're going to give you five samples. Now, when they give these samples to you, they're going to give them to you with a little piece of chocolate. I didn't actually pay attention to the chocolate till towards the end. And I'm going to give you a strategy when you go in and you taste. They do a really good job of teaching you the tasting process. But one thing that I think is important, they start you off with the strongest whiskey they have, which is the White Dog. White Dog is a clear liquid that is the whiskey before it enters the barrel. So it's very potent. It's going to make your tongue say, whoa, what's going on here? Because it's very high in alcohol. And then you're going to go on and you're going to drink the regular makers, the 46, the cask strength, and then their private select. And by the time you've had that white dog hit your tongue, it's going to be hard for you to taste anything as clearly because you've really knocked your taste buds out. And if you eat that chocolate on top of it, chocolate's going to coat your mouth. You're always going to have that chocolate kind of interfering with the, with the flavor. So here's my strategy. When you go in and they tell you about the white dog, look at it and go, that's nice. Everybody else has taken their sample. Wait for the next one and then work your way up. And that way you'll have more of an opportunity to taste these whiskeys. And then you can go back and try the white dog at the end. And for the chocolate, do all of your tastings first and then take a little bit of the chocolate and try your favorites and see if it changes things. Because it's amazing when you start doing those pairings to see how the flavors change. Sometimes flavors will jump out at you that weren't there before. I have a whiskey that I drink with a hot chili dark chocolate and it's a very intense whiskey. And all of a sudden when you put the two together, it's like you're eating an almond joy. It's like this coconut comes out of nowhere and you can't quite figure out how it got there. So it's, it's fun to do, but if you eat the chocolate too early in the process, you're not going to get a chance to really understand the flavors of these whiskeys on their own. They don't give you a lot. And when I say they're going to give you five whiskeys, some people may be going, whoa, that's a lot of alcohol. But in reality, in Kentucky, they can't give you more than 1.75 ounces worth of whiskey. That's 50 milliliters. So that's basically 10 milliliters per sample that you get. So if you're a driver and you're worried about it, I did this whole entire tour solo. So that was a worry of mine when I started doing the tour. And then finding out that that's the way the law is set up, it actually allows you to be able to do the sampling and not be endangering people unless you're really lightweight on the whiskey or they're serving you some really high alcohol content, which two of these are pretty high. But, you know, if you're a driver, you may want to skip the white dog or just take a little taste of it. But I mean, that would be the one I'd probably avoid or the cask strength. But usually the cask strengths are the ones that have the most flavor that comes out in them. So, Hopefully that helps you figure out a strategy for yourself that, that works for you. But the tasting's really fun. And then as you come out, you actually see over your head this, this blown glass, this, this amazing glass work that was done by uh, Dale uh, Chihuly. And I had to remember the name. Dale Chihuly, world famous. Uh, at doing uh, glass and making glass and decorative glass. And so this is beautiful to see over your head. So you'll get to see that and then you'll be walked into the gift shop. In the gift shop, you're going to get a chance to actually dip your own bottle. Now, it's going to cost you extra. You got to buy the whiskey and then you've got to buy the ability to do the dipping of your bottle. But it's a great keepsake. 
Personally, I didn't do it. And the only reason I didn't do it is because I don't collect whiskey. I buy whiskey because I want to drink it. And so I know that's just a big tease to do that. And then I've gone to all that effort to make my own bottle. Maybe I can take some pictures of it as, and put it up in the family album or whatever. I don't know. But basically, I end up drinking it. So for me, it was like, eh, okay, that's cool. Some people were really getting into it and it can be a lot of fun. So that might be something that you want to add into your tour at the end. So you've gone through the entire tour. Fantastic. Now you're coming back out onto this beautiful campus and you can take all the pictures you want to take and just wander around and see. You really could spend a lot of time there just looking and taking pictures. I love taking pictures and stuff. So it's a very photogenic kind of an area for you to see. And if it's a sunny day like it was when I went, just absolutely beautiful to see. So I don't think I mentioned it either. One other thing that this distillery has that a lot of other ones don't, it has the bottling line. So you can see the bottles coming down through. But the big show is at the end when you get to see them take the bottles and they hand dip every single one of the ones that come through the line. It's just, it's fun to sit there and watch it. And they actually, when I was there, they had a painting of Margie Samuels over there at the end of the line. And it just seemed fitting to have her kind of watching over the line as all of this is going on. So I hope all of that helps you kind of understand what a Maker's Mark distillery tour is going to be like. And then I mentioned that there were a couple of things that you could do as well and mix these in with your tour. One is I highly suggest driving about 20 miles, well, it's actually 10 miles down the road, about a 20 minute drive to Lebanon, Kentucky. And there you're going to find the Kentucky Cooperage. And most distilleries, almost all distilleries in Kentucky do not have an on-site cooperage. One does, and I'll tell you about it in a future episode. But there is not on, an on-site cooperage, and that's such a fun thing to watch, to see them firing the barrels and learn about the char numbers. And you'll start learning as you go to other distilleries to ask them what char number they use. The, the, all these different things lend to the character of the whiskeys. So I highly recommend going down to the Kentucky Cooperage. I was there on a Sunday. I didn't get a chance to go because they're closed on Saturday and Sunday. But if you're there on a weekday, check it out. And then there's another distillery down there that is a craft distillery. If you've ever seen Yellowstone bourbon, then that comes from uh, Limestone Branch. And Limestone Branch is a distillery down there that I heard a lot of buzz about. And so next time I go up, I'm going to make sure that I go to Limestone Branch and check that one out as well. But lots of dis distilleries all across Kentucky, lots of choices. You could head in many directions, but those are two that are pretty close and can really just add. And that's a whole day. And that's a, a fun whole day built around whiskey. So I hope you enjoyed the episode today. More episodes like this coming up and we'll get into more whiskey stories and things like that along the way as well. But I've been to so many distillery tours that I thought it'd be fun to help you sort of figure out how to plan your own distillery tours by hearing what my experience was at these different ones. So you can kind of write down and make a list of, man, that one has this and this one has that. And those are the ones I'd really like to end up going to. So thanks for watching. Get yourself a bottle. Enjoy responsibly. Whiskey is such a fine thing. Cheers. Ooh, that's good when it sits for a while. Yeah.